Giovanna usually takes bus B to work, but now she thinks that bus A gets her to work faster. She randomized 50 work days between a treatment group and a control group. For each day from the treatment group, she took bus A, and for each day from the control group, she took bus B. Each day, she timed the length of her drive. And this is really interesting what she did. It's very important. She randomized the 50 work days. It's important she did this instead of just kind of waking up in the morning and just deciding on her own which bus to take. Because humans are infamously bad at being random. Even when we think we're being random, we're actually not that random. She might inadvertently be taking bus A earlier in the week, where maybe the, the commute times are shorter. Or maybe she inadvertently takes bus A uh, when when the weather is better, when there's less traffic. And remember, she you know there's a natural tendency for human beings to want to confirm their hypothesis. So if she thinks that bus A is faster, maybe she'll want to pick the days where it, where she'll get data to confirm her hypothesis. So it's really important that she randomize the 50 work days. And so what I could imagine she did is maybe she wrote each of the work days, the dates on a piece of paper, so she would have 50 pieces of paper, and then she turned them all upside down, and, or maybe she closed her eyes, and then she moved them all over her table, and then with her eyes closed, she randomly moved them to either the left or the right of the table. And if they move to the left of the table, then those are the days she'll take bus A. If she moves them to the right of the table, those are the days she takes bus B. And that's how she can make sure that this is truly random. All right, so then they tell us, the results, this is important, the results of the experiment show that the median travel duration for bus A is eight minutes less than the median travel duration for bus B. Or one way to think about it, if we said, if we said the treatment, treatment group, the treatment group median minus, minus the control group median, control group median, what would we get? Well, it, the treatment group is eight minutes less than the control group, right? This is A, this is B. So if this is eight less than this, then this is going to be equal to negative eight. This is just another way of restating what, what, what I have underlined right over here. Someone's car alarm went off. I hope you're, you're not hearing that. Anyway, I'll try to pay attention while it's going off. <laughs> to test whether the results could be explained by random chance, she created the table below, which summarizes the results of 1,000 re-randomizations of the data with differences between medians rounded to the nearest five minutes. So what is going on over here? You might say, well, look, she got her result that she wanted to get. She sees this, this, this data seems to confirm that bus A gets her to work faster. What's all this other business with re-randomization she's doing? Well, the important thing to realize is, and, and she realizes this, is that she might have just gotten this data that I underlined by random chance. There's some chance maybe A and B are completely similar in terms of how long they take in reality, and she just happened to pick bus A on days that are where bus A got to work faster. Maybe bus A B is faster, but she just happened to take bus A on the days that it was faster, the days that just happened to have less traffic. So what she's doing here is she re-randomized the data, and she wants to see, well, what's if with all this re-randomized data, out of these 1,000 re-randomizations, what fraction of them do I get a result like this? Do I get a result where A is eight minutes or more faster? I guess, you, or you could say that the median travel duration for bus A is eight minutes less or even less than that than the median travel for bus B. So if it was nine minutes less, or 10 minutes less, or 15 minutes less, those are all the interesting ones. Those are the ones that confirm our hypothesis that bus A gets to work faster. So let's look at this table. It's not below, it's actually to the right. So let's just, let's just remind ourselves what she did here. Because the first time you, you try to process this, it can seem a little bit daunting. So in her experiment, let me write this down. Experiment, car alarm outside, which you probably, hopefully, are not hearing. It's actually a surprisingly pleasant sounding car alarm. Sounds like a, like a, a slightly obnoxious bird. But anyway, so her experiment is, so the way I described it, 25 days she would take bus A, 25 days she took bus B, and she would record all the travel times. And let's say that I just have 25 data points in each column. And so let's say you get 12 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and you just keep going. There's 25 data points. And let's just say that there are 12 data points less than 20 minutes and 12 data points more than 20 minutes. And so in this circumstance, her median time for bus A would be 20 minutes. And I just made this number up. And so in order for this to be eight minutes less than the median time for bus B, the median for bus B maybe we would have to be 28. And maybe you have data points here. Maybe this is 18. 
and you have 12 more that are less than 28, and then you have 12, 12 more that are greater than 28. And so the median time for bus B, the median time for bus B would be 28. Once again, I just made this data up. And if you took treatment group median, and I'll just write, I'll write TGM for short, TGM minus control group median, control group median, what do you get? 20 minus 28 is negative 8. This is, this is the actual results of, or these are uh, theoretical or potential results, hypothetical results, for her actual experiment. Now what's all of this business over here? Well, what she did is she took these times and she said, you know what, maybe, let's just imagine a world where I could have gotten any of these times randomly on either bus. So she just randomly resorted them between, she just randomly resorted them between A and B. And she did that a thousand times. So the first time, the second time, the third time, and she does this, she does this 1,000. 1,000 times. I'm assuming she used some type of a computer program to do it. And each time, once again, she, she just took the data that she had and she just rearranged it. She just, she just reshuffled it. So maybe A on one day, maybe it gets, maybe it gets this, maybe it got this 18, maybe it gets the 25, maybe it gets a 30. Once again, so we've got the 18, the 25, and the 30, and maybe B gets the, and you know, and she's reshuffling all this other data points that I just have with dots, and maybe B, let's see if she got the 18, 25, and 30, maybe 12, 20, and 28. 12, 20, and 28. And so in this circumstance, this random reshuffling, and she keeps doing it over and over again, in this random reshuffling, the t treatment group median minus the control group median is going to be what? It's going to be equal to positive 5. In this random shuffling, this hypothetical scenario, bus A's median would have been 5 minutes more, longer than bus B's. And so if she gets this result with this random resorting, this would have been, and this is actually a, this is a, she would have had a, a column here for 5, and then she would have, she would have notched put one notch right over here. But it looks like she, she classified things, or maybe she didn't even get the data, but she classified them by multiples of two. But then if she got this again, then she would have put a two here. And then she, she, she would have said, okay, and how many of these random reshufflings am I getting a scenario where there's a, a five minute difference? So, or where the treatment group is five minutes longer. So what is this, so what is this saying? So for example, for example, this is saying that 18 out of the 1,000 reshufflings, when she just randomly reshuffled the data, 18 out of those 1,000 times, she found a scenario where her treatment group median was 10 minutes longer than her control group, where bus A, its median, was in this hypothetical re-randomization, where the treatment group is 10 minutes slower than the control group. There were 159 times where the treatment group, once again, in her random reshuffling, this, these aren't based on observations, these are random reshufflings, there's 159 times where her treatment group is four minutes slower than her control group. So the whole reason for doing this is she says, okay, what's the probability of getting a result like this, like this, or better, and I say better is you know I guess one that even more confirms her hypothesis that the treatment group is faster than the control group. Well, the scenario, this scenario is this one right over here, and then the another one that where the treatment group is, is is even faster is this right over here. Here, the treatment group median is ten less is ten less than the control group median. So, in how many in how many of these scenarios out of the thousand is this occurring? Well, this one occurs 85 times, this one occurs 8. So if you add these two together, 93 out of the 1,000 times out of her re-randomization, or I guess you could say 9.3% of the time, if the data, if you, 9.3% of the randomized, of the, in the 1,000 re-randomizations, 9.3% of the time she got data that was as, as validating of a hypothesis or more than the actual experiment. So one way to think about this is the probability of randomly getting the results from her experiment are, or, or, or better results from her experiment are 9.3%. So they're low. It's a reasonably low probability that, that this happened purely by chance. 
Now, a question is, is well, what's the threshold? If it was a 50%, you say, okay, this was you know, very likely to happen by chance. If this was a 25%, you're like, okay, it's, it's less likely to happen by chance, but it could happen. 9.3%, and it's roughly 10%. You know, uh, uh, every, for every 10 people who do a, a, an experiment like she did, one person, even if it was random, one person would get data like this. So what typically happens among statisticians is they draw a threshold. And the threshold for, st for statistical significance is usually 5%. So one way to think about it, the probability of her getting this result by chance, or, or this result or a more extreme result, one that more confirms her hypothesis by chance, is 9.3%. Now, if, you're, if your cutoff for significance is 5%, if you said, okay, this has to be 5% or less, then you say, okay, this is not statistically significant. There's a more than a 5% chance that I could have gotten this result purely through random chance. Now once again, that just depends on where you have that threshold. So when we go back, I think we've already answered the final question. According to the simulations, what is the probability of the treatment group's median being lower than the control group's median by eight minutes or more? Which once again, eight minutes or more, that would be negative eight and negative 10. And we just figured that out. That was 93 out of the 1,000 re-randomizations, so it's a 9.3 percent chance. And if you set 5% as your cutoff for statistical significance, you'd say, okay, this doesn't quite meet my, my, my cutoff, so I may, maybe this is not a statistically significant result.